Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Welcome back to the Cincinnati Junior Sabbath School Show. My name is Sean Jima. We are on lesson nine for both PowerPoint and Cornerstone lessons. Before we start with the before we start with the lessons though, if you do not already have copies of our Sabbath School books, you can go check them out at www.juniorsabbathschool.juniorpowerpoint.org and cornerstoneconnections.net. I hope you can go and check them out. The title for our PowerPoint lesson is Dreams Can Come True. The power text can be found in Ephesians in in chapter, chapter, th chapter 4, verse 32, and it reads, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving forgiving each other just as just as in Christ give God give forgive you the powerpoint is because God provided provided forgiveness for all of us we we forgive and respect one another also the cornerstone lesson is lift up in your head the key text can be found in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28, and it reads, And there, and there will be signs in the sun and in the moon, and the stars, then, then, then they will see, then they will see the Son of Man coming in, in a cloud with power and great glory now when now when these things begin to happen look look up and lift up your heads because the redemption draws near thank you very much for joining us i hope you can stay around for the stay tuned for the powerpoint and cornerstone discussions god bless you Hey guys, and welcome to Sissy Junior Summer School Show. My name is Emanuela. And my name is Michelle. And my name is Brian. And we do have a special guest here with us today, so can you please introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you do? Hi, Jeff. Hello? Um, hello. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so before we start, um, I'll give us an uh, opening prayer. Let me bow your heads and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for allowing us to gather here today to learn about your word. Lord, I ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to speak through each and every one of us. And I ask that all those who are watching as well, they may learn something from this and apply it to their lives daily. And I ask for this in your mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. so Hope TV uh, does replay our videos on their satellite every Sunday at 12 p.m. and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. CB Radio Ghana replays our videos on their page every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And Obra TV replays our videos every Monday through Friday. So now we're going to move on to our PowerPoint lesson. Um, as Sean said, we are on lesson nine. And um, the title is Dreams Do Come True. And the power text is found from Ephesians 4, verse 32. So now we'll have Brian give us a summary of today's lesson. So, today's lesson summarized is the lesson of David while he was in Egypt.
Egypt after he did the Adam play, he became Pharaoh's right hand man. And then the people were wondering, this is a story being told to the people were wondering why. Why? Why he didn't have his brothers thrown into jail or punished for what they did to him before. But then he thought he thought himself that if he followed what God did, his life would be better for him and then that should be the end of the story. Thank you for your summary, Brian. So now we'll have um, Michelle and Pastor join us in our discussion. Uh, so the first question for the PowerPoint discussion is, has someone done something so bad to you that you thought you could never forgive them? Thing. No one has the first. Jesus said, we gave 70 times 7. So that's what I did here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if somebody's done something that I thought I wouldn't be able to forgive them. And um, sometimes I just have to get over it because in the end, Sometimes it might have been something that just affected you in that moment, and it doesn't really matter later on. And Pastor? Okay, I don't know whether you hear me, because I'm struggling to hear you. Again, because I was traveling to here. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Why? I, I wanted you to repeat the question. I don't know whether it's the same question I have here. I don't know what done something to you. so bad to me that like I, I didn't want to forgive the person like every single time I see them my, my blood would just boil I would just be so annoyed with the person but like after reading like the Bible or whatever and that like God telling me that I couldn't just like let the what the person did to me just like hold on to it because even when Jesus came on this earth and they did all that they did to him. 
he then also asked God for God to forgive them for what they have done. So at the end of the day, like me too, I have to like love my neighbors, not just the people who do good to me, but the people who also do bad onto me. So I had to end up just like forgiving them and just actually doing so out of my own heart. But I do like to remind our viewers that you guys are part of our discussion. So any of the questions I may ask, you may put them in the comments below and I'll read you guys' answers. The next question for the PowerPoint discussion is, why do you think Joseph took so long to reveal himself to his brothers? I believe Joseph took so long to reveal himself to his brothers to see if they've changed or not, acting on how they are. Because when Joseph met his brothers, his brothers sold him up to slavery. So now he wants to see if they change people into they deserve what he's given them. Thank you. I think Joseph took so long to reveal it to his brothers because he really wanted to know if they had changed. Mm -hmm. And Pastor? Okay, yeah. I have personally think that it took so long, as we have already been speaking, to that they wanted to be, uh, like Joseph wanted to know whether they have changed. But if you also understand that Joseph had had a lot from the brothers. I mean, pain. They have caused him a lot of pain for me. And so he needed to take his time to know a lot of things before he could reveal himself to them. So, yes, he wanted to know whether they have changed, but he needed to know a lot about them and currently, I mean, their family, what is really happening with his father, his brother, um, Benjamin. So, Joseph needed to take his time, go through a lot of things for them before he was able to reveal himself. So, personally, I think that Joseph took longer time to reveal himself because he wanted to know more about his family at the current time, at the time Joseph was maybe to speaking to them, wanted to know what was happening. And that was why he had to take a longer time to reveal himself. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answers. Um, next question for the PowerPoint discussion is, if you were Joseph, would you have forgiven your brothers? If I was Joseph, I would have forgiven my brothers because God said, "Man is there to be cut mine, but for that, is there to be it and that, right?" And then Jesus also said, "Forgive seventy-seven times seven, meaning forgive until you forget." that amount of times but no one's going to remember the count of times they're forgiven. So in other words, forgive infinitely. Um I would because of the position I'd be in, but like if none of that had happened to me, I would have probably not been able to forgive them. Mm-hmm. Cause like they didn't try to look for you nothing and now they want forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Pastor? Yes, obviously, if you are talking about myself, I would have forgiven them. That is true. And it was important for Joseph to forgive. And it is important for us to try to forgive anyone who wrong us. Why? The reason is very simple. Now, if you do not forgive the person who has wronged you, what really are you doing? And what will be the difference between you and that person who has wronged you? If you are not forgiving the person, then there is still not to be any difference between you. But there should be different. Because you never liked what the person did to you. And that is the main reason why you need to forgive such a person. Because you never liked it. So you don't have to also repeat the same thing to the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answers. Um, me, I feel like I'd eventually forgive them. But still, I feel like I forgive but not forget. Like I'd always, it would always be in the back of my head that they were able to just easily do something like that. Like your own brothers were able to sell you into slavery, not even worry, at first they were even gonna kill him and then they sold him into slavery and then they didn't even worry about like where he was anymore. It was just, they didn't care for me anymore. So to think of that is just 
Like, it would always be in the back of my head. I, would, I don't know if I'd actually be able to forgive them. But thank you guys for your answers. Um, next question is, why do you think uh, Joseph's brothers needed reassurance after their father had died that Joseph had actually forgiven them? I believe they needed reassurance because their father might have been the only reason that Joseph was helping them. As Joseph's father loved him very much and Joseph loved his father as well. So they might have needed reassurance to make sure that they were actually forgiven and he wasn't taking pity on them just because of their father. Thank you for your answer. Um, I think it's because that the brothers knew what they had done to Joseph was like terrible because like you sold him off mm -hmm. like they have that guilty conscience and that's like i feel like they feel like that's something that if it happens one of them they could probably never forgive anybody and that what they did was unforgivable mm -hmm. and okay um answering this question let me first go back to something that something you said talking about i would have loved to forgive them but i don't think i'll forget Talking about forgetting, that is not ours to do. We should pray that God will help us not to keep those bad memories in our mind. So God is able to do that. So and we should also pray that the Spirit of God will help us to be able to forgive. And when we have forgiven, and there is a need to forget, God will help us to be able to forget. Again, coming back to this particular question, we needed reassurance because we all know the bond that existed between Jacob, I mean Israel, and Joseph, the son. They were very close. Jacob or Israel loved the son, I mean jo Joseph, so much. And Joseph also loved the father so much. And we all saw what happened when they got to Egypt. How Joseph wanted to see the father. So they probably may have been thinking that Joseph maybe forgave them because their father was there. And now that the father is born, perhaps Joseph wouldn't continue the kind gesture anymore. So they needed reassurance to see that indeed Joseph had forgiven them. I think that was why they needed to be reassured that they have been forgiven. Thank you for your answer. Um, and the last question for the PowerPoint discussion is, what does this story teach us to do to others who have wronged us? Is that to me, myself? to forgive because in forgiving somebody also comes uh, something good mm -hmm. and Brian <laughs> yeah what does the story teach us to do to others who have wronged us the story teaches us to forgive those who have wronged us Um, Pastor, what is your answer? What does the story teach us to do to others who have wronged us? That is an obvious thing. Based on what my sister and brother has said, it teaches us to forgive. Uh, to be able to forgive, it is not something that comes from our own self. The person who has forgiven and can help us to be able to forgive is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that is why we need him in our life. And having him in our life, it means that we then will be able to forgive. Otherwise, we can easily say we want to forgive, but it will be extremely difficult. Because Jesus already has forgiven us. And thinking about the forgiveness Jesus offers to us, 
then we can also forgive others. So what we need uh, in this lesson, what we need is Jesus Christ, who can help us to forgive others who have wronged us, because he first gave us, and we need to forgive others too. Thank you, that's great answers to the PowerPoint uh, discussion. So before we move on to the cornerstone discussion, uh, we'll have a intermission of music. cornerstone discussion and the title is lift up your head and the key text is found from Luke 21 verse 25 to 28 so now we'll have Michelle give us a summary um, so the summary of the lesson is about um, Jesus telling his, his disciples what will come when he's about to come and he talks about how people will be coming and saying that um, that he's God and that there will be um, nations going against nation, that they will be persecuting us and um, some other stuff. And he tells them that, but they shouldn't um, fear because when the time comes up, they should look up to heaven because their redemption is near. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michelle, for uh, your summary. So now we'll have Pastor join us in the discussion. Um, first question is, if you were one of the disciples listening to Jesus talking about all of the things that were to come, what would you fear? 
Um, I would be scared because, like, that's a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of sounds scary. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like you never actually know when all this stuff is going to happen and you don't know what's going to happen to you. Any other questions? Okay. You know, you are beside us to tell me Jesus Christ, listening to his words, detailing things that will precede his second coming. Obviously, there are certain things that we mentioned that likely to frighten you. You will be frightened. There are others that are also to encourage you. And obviously, you will be encouraged to see that very soon you are going to have your salvation assured. And so, as a disciple, um, before sitting before Jesus and listening to Jesus, I am going to feel something like a little bit frightening. At another point, I am going to be assured that my salvation is uh, drawing nigh very soon. Everything will be over. Because sometimes, you see, when you are a mother living in a war-torn area, and you look at your child who, because of famine, has been basically been reduced to a walking skeleton, and you can even count the ribs. Sometimes when some of these things happen, there's something you that cries out that uh, there must be a change. And these were some of the things that Jesus said to precede the second coming. So if I sit before Jesus detailing this as a disciple and seeing this, obviously, the change I want, I will see that it is about to happen. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you for your answer. Um, the next question for uh, the Cornerstone discussion is, of the things that Jesus claimed would happen, have you, of all the things that Jesus claimed would happen, have you seen any of them happen today? And if so, what did they tell us? Um, yes, I have seen, well, not necessarily seen, but I've heard um, some of the things, like, there are a lot of people coming saying that they're Jesus or mm -hmm. God or whatever. And there's also a lot of fighting. So it tells us that the time is near and that Jesus, it won't be long before Jesus comes. So we have to change our ways. Mm -hmm. And Pastor? Okay. Talking about the thing Jesus said will precede his second coming, which sometimes we refer to as signs of his second coming. Mm -hmm. I can put them in these signs in the political world, signs in the social world, signs in the natural world, signs in the religious world. And in all, you can see that I personally have seen happening. Talk about signs in the political world. Nations rising against nations. The current one that I can use on a, as an example, what is happening before all of us, our eyes, and we can see vividly and hear about and watch in the news, is currently the war between Russia and Ukraine. It is Russia against Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So nations against nations are talked about by our Lord and Savior Jesus as preceding his second coming. We are witnessing some currently in our world. And then talking about signs in the natural world. In the natural world, like natural people at Hebrews, we are seeing a lot of things. Tornadoes, hurricanes. And in the summer, we had a lot of wildfires in the United States here. So tell you the truth. For that one too, we are seeing and hearing right before our eyes. Now uh, let's talk about science in the social world. Yes, we just talked about a lot of them. And we are seeing so many things happen. People becoming lawless. Do not want to ab even abide by any rules and regulations. We see a lot of things happen. We, we all heard what happened really in Texas that somebody will enter a school, kill about 19 students and two teachers for, for, for nothing, 
but they have not done anything just because someone just became angry and decided to do that. Someone will enter a supermarket and then decide to just pull a gun and start killing, shooting, riding things. And this should tell you that all the signs Jesus talked about as we perceive his second coming are happening. Talk about signs in the religious world. Yes, we are living in a time where spiritualism seems to be on ascendancy. When I talk about spiritualism, it is different from spirituality. Spiritualism has to do with um, the Holy Spirit, the devil pretending or evil spirit pretending to be the Holy Spirit. And now sometimes you enter churches and you wonder whether you are in a church house or somewhere. A lot of things are happening pointing to one fact that all the things Jesus talked about as if we see the second coming are happening. We have false prophets and we have false dreams and visions and we have false claims. And sometimes a lot of things that we do do not conform the scripture. These things are all telling us that the signs of the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is happening right before our eyes. So personally, if the question is a personal one, I have seen a lot based on what I have said. So thank you for your answer. Um, in our comments, Marion said uh, one of the signs as to which it shows that he's coming back is the uh, Euphrates River is drying up. And I agree. Um, next question for our cornerstone discussion is, what do you think Jesus meant when he said, lift your head up? Um, I think that that is because he felt like there's going to be a lot of people coming and saying, oh, I'm God, here I am, or whatever. The, we know from the Bible that the only way um, God and Jesus are coming is from the sky. So it's kind of like a look up because... That's so you know that it's actually truly us. Mm -hmm. And Pastor? Okay, obviously you can understand the context in which Jesus talked about lift up your heads. And that context should be able to tell us a lot. And I think when we read verse 28, um, the Bible says, it says, when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing you. What are the these things? And if we are able to identify the these things, then we'll be able to understand what we mean by um, heads up or lift up your head. And the these things are the signs that will precede the second coming. And it's just saying that after they have happened, so when they begin to happen, and you can see they have begun to be happening, and because they are happening, it means our redemption, our salvation is assured. And very soon, our Savior will be sent to take his Isaiah chapter 20. And very soon, we shall be home. That these things that we are experiencing will be no more. It is an assurance of our salvation. It is an assurance that our redemption is very nigh. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for your answers. And the last question for our Cornerstone discussion is, after hearing all the things that are going to happen before Jesus comes, what should we do as Christians to prepare for his second coming? Um, I think this should tell us that we need to um, become stronger in our faith. And not only that, but also share it to those who don't know of what's coming. Mm -hmm. And Pastor? What we are supposed to do is to prepare for his second coming now. How do we prepare for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Is to live a Christ-like life. How do we live a Christ-like life? Now come, two things, prayer and Bible study. It is time for us to pray that before. It is time to study the Bible like we have never done before. We should be praying like we have never done before. We should be studying the Bible like we have never done before. And as we pray and study the Bible, because we are going to study the Bible to know a lot of things, what God demands, what God requires of us. And knowing what God requires of us, there is the possibility that we are going to think, how do I, how will I be able to fulfill this requirement? Uh, how will I be able to now give uh, into this requirement? As you pray, obviously, the Holy Spirit will now empower you to be able to just fulfill the requirements 
And this will prepare you for the second coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for your answers to um, the question and uh, PowerPoint discussion. So that is uh, the end of our show. So now I'll ask Pastor if you could give us a moral lesson that we can get from both of the lessons. Okay, I just want us to understand Jesus is coming and there is no doubt that very soon our Savior will descend to take his exact up to three. And because he is coming, no matter the bad things someone may have done to us, I am saying the best for us to do is to forgive. And by so doing, we will be preparing for the second coming of Christ. Because we have not been promised for freedom from these things. On a more serious note, what Christ has promised us is that we are going to suffer these things. But the, the promise is that he is going to be with us. So, whatever someone may have done to you, we as I indicated, as we pray and study the word of God, the Holy Spirit will empower us. And we'll have the strength to be able to forgive that person. And then we'll be able to have the Holy Spirit to help us to fulfill the demands of the word of God that we are reading. By so doing, we'll be preparing ourselves for the second coming of Christ. And when he descends, we can be part of the same that we go marching in. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you for your moral lesson. Um, and also, thank you, Michelle, Ryan, and also Pastor, for your guys' answer to both the PowerPoint and Cornerstone discussion. So that is it for our show. So, Pastor, may I ask you for a closing prayer? Okay. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are very much grateful for this message you have given us. We are so much grateful that on every Sabbath you bless us with miracles that come from your way. Father, our prayer is that may you strengthen us and help us. And we will be able to live by these messages that we are hearing. And we will not just be fearless, but doers. And we know before we can be doers, we need your spirit. May you baptize us with a fresh anointing. Every day we will go on and then to do as we want us to do. Continue to bless us and continue to help us that we can become a blessing unto others. In the word of the Lord and Savior Jesus, as we pray, the Holy Word be done in our lives. Wherever we find ourselves, let all the strength of God respond. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you again, Michelle, Pastor, and Brian, for you guys' answers to both the PowerPoint and Cornerstone discussion. Um, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe at Cincinnati Downing SDA Church. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.